was selling Suntec Reed a mistake. I did this video uh, to dive in deeper. If you have watched the previous shot, said one reason that I sold away Suntec and that is the divestment uh, of their Singapore assets, which I can't really comprehend what the management is doing. So in this video, I'm just going to dive in deeper pick up the points and if you're still holding on to Suntech Read, uh, the last portion may interest you. Uh, what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to use this very basic formula, uh, revenue minus expense equals to profits and the profits can then be turned into dividends. So let's zoom in into the uh, revenue portion. I am not going to talk about the Australia, I'm not going to talk about the UK because my initial reasons of buying Suntech was really for the Singapore assets. So in the Singapore assets, we can split into two components, which is the office and the mall. So let's zoom in into the office. Down here, I have a table, which I'm tabulating the office rent reversions. So in the office rent reversions, what you can see is that on the first quarter of 2 to 3, the rent reversions have peaked at 11.2. And the second quarter of 2 to 3, the rent reversions have slipped a little to 10.5. But definitely one good thing is that uh, the management claim that the upcoming number of leases that's going to expire is at around 35% and yes, there's a probability we could or they could renew it at higher rates. So that's definitely one positive point. If we now zoom into the SG retail, which is the, air, the mall side, what surprised me is that they didn't give a number uh, for the second quarter 2023, but uh, based on the first quarter 2023, the rent reversions was at 16.5. It's a huge jump from the fourth quarter of uh, 2022. So I make an assumption that, okay, if there's still a positive trend where the rent reversions are going to continue to go up, uh, that's also another good point. Okay, But that is also something, one big question mark down there. What I really did not like was actually the divesting uh, three strata units in the Suntech asset because if you look at the Sing Singapore assets which on my record I have the Suntech, ORQ and MBFC right down here I just also put a table that's my own record I, I, as you can see that Suntech property U is way higher than the other two assets if I have to sell I can't phantom why my management would like to sell away an asset where the property U is the highest so that is one negative point for me so now let's head on to the expense side uh, the expense side as we all know for REITs uh, the biggest component is definitely the financing cost uh, what down here I also do is that uh, there's a table right is I tabulated it myself across all the quarterly results uh, finance cost rose steadily from 2.41 in 2Q21 all the way up to 3.64. As we know that the interest rate, is, uh, interest rate has been rising, that is kind of the norm. But what unsettles me is actually the debt composition of fixed versus floating. All went well till first quarter 2023, right? The fixed debt composition was at 72%. But in the second quarter 2023, debt number drop to 58 so if we look at the entire formula revenue minus expense equals to profits which should turn into our dividend payout that we can we as unit holders can receive i, I just use these two components if my revenue right is not going to increase a lot but my expense has a lot of uncertainty it provides a lot of uncertainty in the profits or the subsequent dividends that I, will, that I will receive as a unit holder. How will all these two front components translate into the, the dividends? So revenue plus one because of the possibility of renewing the office expiring leases at a higher rate. The more side, I'll give it a question mark. I didn't like the divestment because it's going to reduce the revenue. And the expense part, is uh, due to the unexpected change in the debt composition right since if there's going to be more debt which is on the floating rate that's going to definitely going to increase the financing cost for Suntech with all these conditions in the first half of 2023 
it allowed Suntech Week to give a dividend of 3.476 cents. So if you are still holding on to Suntech uh, Read, uh, this is the part where it might interest you. Question would be, do I buy, sell or hold, right? Uh, if I were to buy, definitely my method is to analyze it and factor in a margin of safety. So after analyzing the first half dividend, uh, you get around 6.952 cents, but I'll factor in a margin of safety because of all the components that is before I can derive my dividend, which is at the revenue side and at the expense side. Let's say Suntech can only give a very conservative annualized dividend based on the current share price that's around 120 and that's a 5% yield. So if you want to buy, you might want to consider, hey, at 5%, uh, do I have a better uh, investment vehicle? Right. If you were to sell, uh, like for myself, I already sold it. You might want to consider, hey, maybe the share price that you bought at initially still gives you a higher dividend yield, way higher than uh, the other uh, REITs that you have. But if you are holding on, same thing, uh, you still need to continue to monitor that basic formula, revenue, what's going, what are the variables that's going to increase the revenue, what are the variables that's going to increase the expense because at the end, we are kind of uh, mindful of the dividends that we can receive back as a Suntech unit holder. So I hope my walkthrough has given you an uh, end-to-end and allow you to determine what you probably might want to do uh, with your Suntech uh, read portfolio. Uh, if you'd like to watch the entire uh, Suntech read investing journey, you can click on this playlist. Uh, if you'd like to learn a little bit more of what else I'm looking at, uh, which is the CICT, uh, you can watch this playlist. Oh, yes, if you feel that you want to add in comments or you'd like to subscribe, yes, please do. I appreciate it.